So, Mike, I want to ask you, have you been keeping up with like some of the the larger releases this year that have come out in 2024? I've been keeping up a bit with uh, gaming news, but since there it hasn't really been much that's interests me, it's kind of like fallen to the back of my mind. I'd say the only really interesting releases I'm looking forward to is probably about Stalker, uh, Star Wars Outlaws. I'm still kind of interested to see how the new Assassin's Creed game plays out. Yeah, and, the, the, you know, the reason I'm asking that is because, you know, here we have yet another year. And to say that this year has been mediocre for video games is really underselling that whole talking point. It's been a terrible year for video games in 2024. In part, I kind of understand it, because last year, last year was a fantastic year. I think, it, you know, 2023 was the best year in gaming that we've had in over a decade, you know, or about a decade. Uh, the last great gaming year before 2023 was 2013, which is the year the, the PlayStation 4 and the uh, Xbox One were released to market. That's also the same year that uh, The Last of Us and Grand Theft Auto V were released. You know, it was a it was a pretty big year that year. 2023, I think, is the year that came the closest to that level of uh, quality. Uh, but this year, every year can be a big year, and things have slowed down. Even Sony, Sony earlier this year came out and said they don't have any major uh, franchise IP, any games from any of their uh, most important franchises releasing before April of, of next year in 2025. So it's really been bare bones, put it lightly. Mm -hmm. And if you look at some of the, you know, the review scores, there's really a disconnect because if you really observe a lot of these things for what they are, in the top two, we have a, uh, a mediocre, bloated uh, remake that's not really a remake. Some kind of strange pseudo sequel thing with uh, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth and then in number one and the number one spot we got a DLC to uh, an overrated ass game that came out you know two years ago so that that within of itself is, is a joke because there there's no there's there's not a single fucking mixed or negative critic review for this Players have had a lot to say, a lot of negative things to say about the Elden Ring DLC. That's just, just kind of tells you where we're at right now in uh, 2024. In January, we had Like a Dragon, uh, Infinite Wealth, which I'm sure the game was fine, but the publisher, which I believe is Sega, they were trying to force players to buy the deluxe edition of the game, otherwise they wouldn't have access to New Game Plus, which is something I've never heard of. It's like, how could you be a greater scumbag to try and rip off your audience like that? You know? Yeah. I've never heard of a publisher or game developer withholding an important feature like New Game Plus behind it, a more expensive version of their game. Never heard of that before. Yeah, that's crazy. The pure insanity is what that is. We had Tekken 8. Tekken 8 was great, but the, the game has fallen off. I don't know what the online scene looks like right now, but I'd imagine they're lo they're losing casual players left and right. It doesn't have anywhere near the the numbers uh, that Street Fighter VI has in terms of its player retention, uh, which is very important for a fighting game. Early February we had Persona 3 Reload, which is, is great from the little bit that I've played of it. Um, I haven't gotten the chance to uh, to go ahead and wrap it up, but from what I played of it, it's a fantastic game. Even if it didn't really bring anything new that we didn't already see with Persona 5. And then in March, uh, we had Dragon's Dogma 2 release. I was looking forward to that game until I learned more about it and realized the lazy and the uh, inept decisions from the development team for that game. Including the fact that different design choices that they made, such as... Uh, the player not really having any mounts in the game so you have to like walk everywhere and it's like a huge open world game and then I also read that the enemies won't won't leave you alone you encounter an enemy and then the damn thing will chase you all the way across the map i really despise game design like that it's funny to me because they have a demo for it coming out next month 
it, it seemed like they withheld the the demo because they knew the game was going to get a, a bunch of backlash. Yeah, yeah. I watched the um, gameplay videos of that game. It was enemies nonstop while they were running across the map, and you're right, there's no mounts, so it was like a long ass run each time, and then they would backtrack the same route. I was like, no. Way. Yeah, this game cost uh, WB Games and Zenimax two hundred million dollars. Uh, they're not going to be able to recoup that at all. Uh, for whatever random reason, they've chosen to continue releasing content for this game, despite the fact that the the player retention and the, the number of players, active players that they have, whether it's on console or PC, is so low to the point where it really doesn't make any sense to continue supporting this game in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, this is coming off of, you know, last year, when WB Games released uh, Hogwarts Legacy that became the top selling game that was released last year, outselling everything that came out on the market, including uh, Elden Ring, which came out the, the year prior. Well over 25 million copies sold, I believe, was, was the number for Hogwarts Legacy, and they go from that to this, uh, which is, you know, quite arguably the, the worst game uh, that's been released this year. It, it's very baffling the the level of stupidity uh, that these companies have. But then it gets even worse. So we have a uh, Stellar Blade here that uh, came out in late April earlier this year. What can I really say uh, that that I haven't already said about this game? This entire game had you know it was sold off of the sexual aesthetic of of its main character. So, you know, this is a game that tried to take video games back to the early 2000s where, uh, you know, female characters were just uh, used basically as props to, to sell the product. You know, the story really didn't matter much. And that, that's the kind of game that Stellar Blade is. It's a game that's stuck like two decades plus in the past and yet somehow still received an 81 on Metacritic. Even more egregious and astounding false user score right here from, you know, 5,000 idiots who wouldn't know quality of us <laughs> if it was sucker punched in their fucking face. So... One of the Beggars is the uh, most favorite game of all time. Who said that? Uh, one of those guys in the comments. So you, you're saying someone in the, in the user user section said that shit? Yeah. Are you talking about this, this fool right here? Yep, yeah, that guy right there. <laughs> Fucking clown. The story is insane. Easily game of the year. Motherfucker, are you <laughs> stupid? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> are you fucking dumb? He's gotta be trolling. He's gotta be in the way. Motherfucker's out of his goddamn mind, dude. <laughs> I mean, shit, dude. The fucking main character, they, they took a real-life model, took her body, and then designed, uh, developed a, a fake-ass bar Barbie-looking head Barbie doll and stuck the the Barbie doll's head on on the model's body and said this is our main character for for our game. You can dress her up. You can play dress up and shit. And uh, yeah, we're we're gonna have this uh, crazy combat system. And then you know they release the demo and then the shit uh, plays like it's some kind of fucking uh, second rate uh, souls like game full of delayed uh, attack animations and shit to the point where it's like. You know, you press a button on the controller and, and there's like a half second fucking delay before the character actually responds on screen. Um, and it's it was so bad that the, the developer first said that, uh, I think it was the game director, first he, he defended his bullshit saying, oh, it, it's supposed to be designed that way. Then after the game came out, they released a patch addressing the, uh, the, the controller input delay. It's like, so first you, you fucking defend your bullshit, but then you, you go around, you, you turn around and do a 360 to, to where, you, you know, you spin your head a full 360 degrees looking stupid um, to fix, to fix a, a simple fucking uh, mistake that could have been fucking fixed before you even released the demo. So th this, this is the kind of bullshit that we had uh, with, with uh, Stellar Blade. I think this is one of the worst games that came out this year. And then somehow... You know, the year, it just, it keeps dropping the ball. You know, 2024 keeps dropping the ball. We have this game. Now, I haven't played Hellblade 2 yet, but from some of the uh, 
some of the comments that, that I have heard about it, it doesn't do anything different that the first game didn't already do. And it didn't really improve on anything. In fact, it actually made some things worse, like the combat system. So you only fight like one enemy at a time, and then they took away one of the core uh, mechanics, the combat system from the, from the first game. I, I really don't know what the hell they were thinking. And, you know, since this is a, an Xbox exclusive, you would think that, you know, Microsoft would have a greater field of depth for, you know, quality control with these things. But I guess not. Basically, the point I'm getting at is, you know, 2024 has been, it's been a pretty bad year for video games. It hasn't been a rough year. It's been a bad year. It's been a terrible year for, for video games. There's a number of releases that, that's coming out later this year. Next next month in August, we have Black Myth Wukong. In September, we have Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. We have, not, not counting any re-releases re or anything. In October, we have the Silent Hill 2 remake, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, Metaphor Refantasio, and I think the, uh, the Call of Duty Black Ops 6, I think that's coming out as well in October. Yeah. And, and um, oh, I, I also forgot about uh, Star Wars Outlaws that's coming out in late September, if I'm not mistaken. And then in November, we have uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows. So do you think that uh, the second half of this year will, will save the first half? Because like I said, I'm, I'm looking at these, um, I'm, I'm looking at these fucking scores and shit, and the shit doesn't make no fucking sense, like at all. I don't think it will, honestly. I think a few of those will end up flopping. Uh, to be positive, you never really know, but from my experience, you know. I think I think <laughs> the big always goes bad. I think the big one that is probably not going to be as big as people think it is is gonna be Black Myth Wukong. Something about that game just seems to, too good to be true. I'm sure you re you recall uh, when I searched up the uh, the, the length the playtime for, um, the full playtime for Black Myth Wukong, and, uh, the information that I got said that the game was going to be 15 hours long, but apparently the game's going to have, like, over 100 different bosses, dozens upon dozens of enemy types, that, realistically, there's no way that they can stuff that, all of that into 15 hours. So Yeah, it makes no sense to me. Unless the game is nothing but a boss rush game. Because apparently it's more linear than a typical Souls-like game. There's no other weapons that you use, like the the pull that the that we saw in the debut trailer. That is literally like the only weapon that you use throughout the entire game, from what I read. And so I, I think that's going to end up being probably the uh, you know the the biggest disappointment this year. Per personally, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the reviews are going to be for that. But yeah, Star Wars Outlaws. Um, hasn't had any good previews itself. And that's one of the games I was looking forward to the most this year. Um, I'm still going to play it, but uh, my expectations are, you know, have been lowered. Yeah, man, there's just, there's not a whole lot to really look forward to. to yeah, really you made a good point earlier. It's like, I, I don't understand how some of these companies make such bad decisions because, uh, I saw one on the list called uh, Skull and Bones, that pirate game from Ubisoft. Just did a comparison with like some of their uh, older games. I think it was uh, Black Flag. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I never played it, but I was just doing a comparison on them. And it's like, damn, that game had a way more features compared to that. But, like, you can't even swim in that game as a pirate game. Oh, damn, I didn't know it was that bad. And apparently people hate the fuck out of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... I mean, I knew this game, it didn't get the reception that Ubisoft was looking for, but I didn't think it was this bad. Because uh, the pirate game that, that everyone talks about right now is, um, what, what's, what's the other one? There's another pirate game, Sea of Thieves, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I think that just came to PlayStation not too long ago. Because uh, it was, uh, for a while, it was an Xbox exclusive. Yeah, uh, it just came to PlayStation and everyone's still talking about that. Because, yeah, Skull and, Skull and Bones is from Ubisoft, right? Yeah. Yeah, they just they just keep fucking up over and over again. So I think the last uh, Ubisoft game I, I played was Watch Dogs Legion. I think that was the last one. So, <laughs> that flopped bad, too. 
Yeah, it did. It, there's just not a whole lot to look forward to. I think the top three that I'm personally interested in coming out later this uh, later this fall and going through you know the holiday season to the end of the year is uh, Warhammer Space Marine 2, the Silent Hill 2 remake, and Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. That's it. Like if I only played those three games and nothing else for the rest of the year, I'd be satisfied, honestly. And like I said, I, I'm still going to play Star Wars Outlaws, but I'm just going to go through Ubisoft subscription service and go with the cheapest option there, which is like, I think, 17 or $18 a month, and then you can cancel it at any time. You know, I'm not spending full price on that, especially when Ubisoft continues to, you know, neglect Steam and putting their games on Steam as a PC player that, that pisses me off. They want to wait, you mm -hmm. know, several months after the game has been released on PC to um, to give PC players what they want, which is ridiculous. So Yeah, um, they're really trying to push that Ubisoft in there. Well, that and whatever exclusivity deals they make with Epic Games to, to put their games on the Epic Games Store uh, for PC players. But... Yeah, man, it's been a it's been a very bad year for video games. Very, very bad year for video games. And I've, you know, I've voiced this same talking point for years since I started doing narration on the channel. But it just seems like it, it continues to get worse each and every year to the point where you know now the highest rated thing that we have this year is some fucking DLC expansion where more than half of that particular game's audience can't even access the fucking DLC because they need to defeat a, a specific uh, optional boss that they likely missed or didn't even reach in the first place. That, that's where we're at. A DLC expansion is the, is the highest rated thing that, that's come out this year. That's how you know that something's wrong with this, with this business. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's unbelievable to me. Yeah, if, if you had to take like a pick or two, what games do you think will end up meeting expectations later this year? I really think, in my opinion, I think Stalker is going to be a breakout. I don't know. I feel with all they've been through, I really think they're going to cook up a great game. But I don't know I'm if, sure. if it will. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm really rooting, rooting for them for that game. I think with Stalker 2, I think it will be a success. But it's also very reminiscent of the, the Metro series. And so that, that franchise is only for a specific, you know, group of, of uh, people. Um, yeah, I get that. So not everyone's going to appreciate it. If it's good enough, and you know, it could get a, a Game of the Year nomination. But at this point, I don't see any first-person shooter winning, you know, Game of the Year. It's not like how it was back, you know, when we were coming up and it, it was in the middle, you know, mid to late 2000s and... Halo was all the rage. Uh, Call of Duty, the earlier Call of Duty games were all the rage. Times have changed since then. It's not going to be like that this time. I think the breakout, the, the one breakout game, the true breakout game this year is uh, Helldivers 2. But even with that, you know, that game has lost like, last time I checked, it lost over 90% of its player base. People just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, people just don't want to be bothered with it for whatever random reason. That just goes to show how, how weak this year has been. Um, yeah, any final thoughts about uh, this year and the uh, games that are coming out? Yeah, I think for the rest of the year, it will probably be decent, but nothing that's really going to save the year. Yeah. Uh, with Assassin's Creed, we kind of know how that's going to play out. Possibility it could be great, but not too sure on that. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws... Uh, probably be decent game. Of course, you know, the Assassin gameplay was kind of new and fresh, but for the most part, you know, it's still Assassin's Creed. Stalker, I think it will be a great game, uh, but you never know. They have been through a lot. Yeah, I don't think it will be nothing to really top off the years incredible or, you know, or really say, oh, man, this was great. So I think we'll just really end off the year pretty weak. And that will be 2024, honestly. Yeah, I feel, I pretty much feel the same. And by the way, I just passed, on the last page here, I just passed a, a game that I completely forgot about that came out this year, which is uh, Rise of the Ronin. That shit came and went like the wind. <laughs> the fucking gust blew by and that shit flew, flew off into the sunset. 
never to be seen or heard from again. <laughs> That's how for, forgettable that shit was. But see, I only saw a few people talk about that when it came out. Yeah, that's because no one gave a fuck. <laughs> that's Koei Tec Tecmo and Team Ninja for you. Keep uh, releasing the same fucking boring ass, tripe ass, fucking garbage ass Souls like game. Oh, except this time it's 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 open world and uh, there's no demons in it this time. It's just people. It's like well that shit that shit just that makes it even more boring. <laughs> you want me to buy that shit for full price on on PlayStation seventy dollars? I don't think so. <laughs> I think so. They lost their goddamn mind. But anyway, um, yeah, man, I, I just, this year has just been, it's been trash. It's been a joke. And, you know, this is taking me back to, the, you know, 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018. You know, 2017 was an okay year, but, you know, wasn't too special. But, yeah, I think, I think that was the last decent year uh, before 2023, of course. That that uh that we've had and and this year so far it's just been it's been ridiculous. Game developers either not trying to at all or they're just trying too hard. I'm I'm just I'm over the bullshit at this point. Cause I don't I don't understand how you how some of these games even made it past the, the initial production stage. I, I don't understand how some of these things even got to that point. But here we are. Yeah, I think 2025, there's a lot to look forward to in 2025 when it comes to gaming, but this year, is, it's pretty much dead in the water, and I don't see that changing, so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the Silent Hill 2 remake, I'm looking forward to Space Marine 2, I'm looking forward to Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, but beyond that, the hell with 2024 in gaming. <laughs> I, I'd rather... Yeah, I think 2025, yeah, I agree. A lot, a lot of people probably look forward to that. Yeah. I'm I'm looking more forward to like some of the movies that are coming out this year. Like uh, we have Deadpool and Wolverine that's coming out very soon in the next you know two weeks or so, coming to theaters. So I'd I'd rather go and spend my time with that than you know any of these fucking games that that are out right now. Hell, we don't even have um we don't even have any major releases this month or last month for that matter. I mean it's really like empty. It's an empty ass year. The, the, the drought is real. Hopefully something will come out uh, and, and surprise us. As you said, and how, how did you put it? You don't think 2024 is gonna, can be salvaged? Yeah, it, it, it's just too late now. It, it's just going to be a weak year. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. It is what it is. <laughs>